G'day and welcome. This is the 16th video in the series where I'm integrating all the way through Jim Caronis' 100 integrals. And of course, this is his 16th integral in his list. We're certainly starting to get a little more difficult here. and The radical sign here means we certainly can't go the way of uh, partial fractions. The derivative of this does not match what's outside, not even remotely. Uh, so we can't go the way of chain rules. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, this has to be solved using substitution. There's no basic pattern that's familiar to us here. Now what substitution would be best? Well, we go to the worst part of the, uh, the expression, and that's the part under the radical, and we would try to resolve this. Now, a lot of the substitutions we use with great profit are trigonometric substitutions. I want you to observe something. We know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. We know that tan squared theta plus 1 is sec squared theta. And we know that cot squared theta plus 1 is cosec squared. Now, in my country, we write cosec squared theta this way. If you're in the States, it'll just be CSC. Please don't let that bother you. What I want to point out is this. If I move one of these expressions over to the other side, I get a negative expression. Here, I could end up with sec squared minus 1, but I won't get 1 minus a, um, a sec squared, not unless I move the sec squared here and the tan squared, in which case I've got negative tan squared. But if I want to replace 1 minus some uh, square and get a positive square function, it has to be this one. These ones just don't work. So our substitution is going to be for sine x or cos x. Now, I'm going to be substituting uh, x equals sine theta. So let's have a look at what that gives us. First of all, observe that in here, 1 minus x squared cannot be negative. So <clears throat> we would... 1 minus x squared must be greater than or equal to 0. So 1 greater than or equal to x squared, or if you reverse it, and that means the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. Or, if you like, x lies between negative 1 and 1. So we'll just leave that on the side to qualify what we're doing. And we're going to substitute... I should, I should put this up higher. Let's do that. There we go. And we're going to let x equals sine theta. Now that means that dx d theta will be cos theta, so dx will be cos theta d theta. So let's see now what we get. We get the integral of 1 over x squared is going to be sine squared theta root 1 minus sine squared theta and dx I'm going to replace with cos theta. I'll just write that on the top. Cos theta d theta. And notice that if x lies between minus 1 and plus 1, then that's quite satisfactory in terms of theta because sine theta always lies between minus 1 and plus 1. I guess we would, uh, at this stage, possibly restrict theta between pi and 2 and negative pi on 2, that may be relevant to us, uh, given minus pi on 2, pi on 2, theta, and here's x equals sine theta, going from 1 to 
negative 1. Just trying to keep track of the relevant domain for this. Now what have we got? We have the integral to cos theta over sine squared theta times the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Now 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta from that uh, I've rubbed it out now but from the identity that we drew over there and the square root of cos squared theta strictly speaking is the absolute value of cos theta. Now I don't want to get into integrals with absolute values at the moment but let's suffice to say that if theta lies between negative pi on 2 and plus pi on 2 that the cosine of theta is positive anyway so it becomes irrelevant. You can see the importance of, of choosing or identifying a clear domain. The cosines would divide out and we'd be left with the integral of 1 on sine squared or if you like cos x squared theta d theta. With apologies again to my friends in the United States who would prefer CSC for cosecant. But just live with that please. Now, how do we resolve this? You know that the integral of secant squared is tan simply because when at some point, I'm going to rub this out, when you differentiated tan theta, one of the ways you would have done it would be to write sine theta on cosine of theta, differentiate using the quotient rule, and lo and behold, the secant squared pops out. So what would happen if we did this? What's the derivative of cot theta? Well, it's going to be the derivative of cos theta on sine theta. What is it? Well, using our, quoti our uh, quotient rule, we're going to have sine squared theta on the bottom. And we're going to have the derivative of cos theta times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top. Now, interestingly, taking out the negative sign, we're left with sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, which is 1, which is, and 1 over sine squared theta is minus cosec squared theta. So the derivative of cot theta is minus cosec squared theta, so the derivative of negative cot theta would be cosec squared theta. Therefore, when we integrate this, we will get that. So the integral of cos x squared theta is negative cot theta. And that's, an, that's worthwhile tucking away. In our schools in New South Wales here in Australia, students are expected to know the integral of sec squared theta d theta, and to know that's tan theta. Not always expected to know the integral of cos x squared theta d theta is minus cot theta but it's a worthwhile uh, integral to know. Now, all that remains is to put this back into this form. Now, cot theta is cos theta on sine theta. Now, sine theta was x, so let's write x, by the way, sorry, I integrated, so I should have a constant. You're probably shouting at the screen, but there you go. I've got it in. Uh, so we've got the negative sign. We've got sine theta was equal to x. And what's cos theta equal to? Well, you might recall that it's the integral of 1 minus sine squared, which is 1 minus x squared, because x is sine theta. So that was rather an interesting integral. You might feel you've been savaged a little bit by it. Um, but just rehearsing very, very quickly, 
none of the normal patterns appear to apply. And generally speaking, to simplify or resolve something inside a radical, particularly in the denominator, or even in the numerator for that matter, sometimes a substitution, a trigonometric substitution is worthwhile. And um, I hope you found that valuable. Anyway, I'll just get over this side so you can see it. Uh, if you've enjoyed that, please click the like button and leave a comment. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.